Choque de quem que vem, de que vale Deixe isso pra lá, vem pra cá, o que que tem Ah, não estou fazendo nada, você também Mas me bater um papo se gostoso com a mão Deixa que de quem que vem, de que vale Deixe isso pra lá, vem pra cá, o que que tem Ah, não estou fazendo nada, você também Hi again. Today we're going to take a quick tour around my 1988 Mitsubishi J23G. This unit was built by Mitsubishi under a license from Willys and delivered to the Japan Ground Self-Defense Force. I'm not sure about the originality of many parts on the Jeep, so I will start with what I do know, which is the chassis number. All of these Jeeps were given specific chassis codes which identify the model and the variant of the unit. Looking at this chart taken from the factory service manual, this shows mine to be a J23GE or GN. I have no way of knowing which, but they appear to differ only in which type of weapons mount that it was fitted by the JGSDF. The GE was built to carry a Type 73 guided missile for anti-tank duty, where the GN had a very similar unit tasked as anti-landing craft. As far as I know, this unit was demobilized in around 2014 and auctioned as surplus. It was imported into the Philippines around 2015 or 2016, where it was restored and registered with the licensing authorities here. I think that at this time it was converted to left-hand drive since it's illegal to operate a right-hand vehicle in the Philippines. Looking at the cab, it appears the dash is the correct left-hand drive panel. The wiper mechanism is for right-hand drive and the windshield frame has the mounting pad for the manual windshield wiper up on the right which I think was fitted for emergency use by the driver if the electrical system failed. All of the data plates look to be original, but there is no plate showing the engine type or serial number. On the instrument panel, the amateur is obviously a replacement. The stock gauges don't last forever. Note that the handbrake lever and hood latches are on the passenger side, which leads me to think it was converted from right-hand drive to left-hand drive. I'm not sure if the seat covers are original, but the shape is correct. Also note that the passenger seat slides backwards and forward, but not the driver's side. Under the hood is a correct 4DR6 engine. The earliest J23 models, starting in 1985, had the air intake inside the grille with an intake tube going straight back to the airbox. This one has this interesting snorkel type system which pulls air from a vent cover on the side of the hood through this sheet metal ducting, then into an intake tube that runs around to the air cleaner, then over the valve cover to the turbo inlet. The clutch cylinder is a Pajero item. The originals are no longer produced. You can see the twin circuit brakes, which also mark it as a Mitsubishi, not a CJ3B. Vacuum is supplied by a pump, not the intake manifold. Note the twin 12 volt batteries that all of the diesel models have. The cartridge type fuel filter on this one suggests that it's an engine from a civilian unit, since the military ones usually have a filter element in an aluminum bowl or it was adapted to use the civilian filters. Right there on the fender is a Japanese military standard 7-pin 7TS-1 electrical socket. It's not wired up for safety reasons, and I can't really think of any use for it. There's another one fitted at the rear of the vehicle for a trailer. Also on this side you can see one of the air vents to let a little more air into the cab for those hot days. Aircon for Jeeps. Coming around to the passenger side again, you can see the second battery, the turbo and the washer tank. In front of the little TDO4 turbo, you can see the alternator with its interesting oil feed and vacuum pump. Right behind that is the oil filter and air cooler. The box behind the grill is a voltage regulator, which I don't think is original.
The headlamps are sealed beam units and have been replaced. The lamps below those are the blackout marker lights. With the hood down you can see the metal cast hinges that all J20 series models had. Starting with the J23 the windshield frame has this boss for a manual windshield wiper. I guess it's for emergency use if the electrics fail. On the fender is the blackout driving lamp which is supposed to be fitted on the driver's side. So the fact that it's not here is more evidence of conversion. Up here above the hood is another air conditioning vent. The suspension and driveline is all pretty stock. I've had the spring bushings replaced recently because they were a bit sloppy and the dampers too because they were basically just ornaments after 35 years. The colour by the way is I think an attempt at spruce tip green poly which was a colour choice on the CJ3B in 1963. Coming down the side of the Jeep you can see my zombie apocalypse axe. The mount is stock, the axe isn't. You can also see some odd coloured patches from rust repairs which are ongoing. The tail lights are all stock, both the service and blackout stuff. The bumper slash footsteps are stock as is the pintle hook. The jerry can you see is a plastic one that I use for carrying water for camping. I do have a steel one for fuel. On the right you can see the radio mounting bracket and the trailer electrical socket. The reversing lamp isn't stock and those are hard to get now. It doesn't affect the departure angle any. Down here you get a better look at the Dana 44 rear axle and the pentel hook. The cargo slash personnel area has all been modified. Originally there was that guided missile launcher in the back and one seat for an operator. Sadly that probably didn't make it off base. The back has been fitted with J23A or A2 type rear seats. The spare carrier is very beefy and handles the weight very easily. The back barn doors open up and there's room for plenty of stuff with the seats up and payload is nearly 300 kilos. There are seats for four and it's quite comfortable on the road. I also have some shelves made up for camping which can go in here or racks for scuba cylinders for dive trips. Going down the passenger side, again there are repairs here and you can probably tell the muffler isn't stock. The stock exhaust exits out the left rear and is said to allow exhaust gas to be pulled back into the cargo area by vacuum at speed, so I won't be putting that one back on. The short elbow works well and the big muffler keeps it very quiet. Here's the shovel, again not stock. The top is original and I think was replaced with a new one in 2012. It's canvas and is waterproofed by waxing. I've added some fresh wax to the seams, as you can see here, to help stop leaks. I have the canvas sides also for the cargo area, which you can see here, and the rear doors, which are not fitted right now. You can kind of keep cargo dry-ish in the back.
obviously there are some rust issues. It's it's an old Jeep. The restorer, I think, did a pretty decent job, but in a few places the paint adhesion wasn't so great, and in a few others there was rust inside the doubled up areas of the tub that you just can't get to without some cutting. The worst was in the sills and up here on this fender where the braces had just been eaten away completely. So we are cutting out the rotten bit slowly and welding in new galvanized sheet steel. This is just protected with oxide primer right now but will get filled and painted later once all the work is finished. The Jeep now wears 15 inch steel wheels for two reasons. One, it was impossible to source new non-directional tires during the lockdown. And two, the stock 15 by 5.5 K rims are said to fail under heavy off-road work. That might have more to do with age than build quality. I don't know. I had to fit some aftermarket rims and go to radial tires for the meantime. I also added some locking hubs for better economy and less wear on the front axle. Hopefully I can find some new non-directional tires in the future and get back to that more original look. Well, that's all for now folks. We'll be back soon with some clips on how this Jeep works on and off-road and something about the camping setup. Again, leave us a like and subscribe. Thank you very much.